Oh, what a sweet day. What a sweet, glorious day. When an ardent feminist, in this case, Richard Carrier, good old Dick Carrier to his friend, or just to his close friends, Dick, no less than the very one who had staunchly pushed for absolute sexual harassment policies at atheist conferences. Uh, and I think we should all, all organizations should call for atheists to speak out against and socially punish, meaning denounce, downvote, for example, and things like that. Any harassment behavior wherever and whenever you can find it, whenever you have an opportunity to, to say, state publicly and make it aware, make it aware, the world aware that atheists, you in particular, are opposed to this, I think we should all be doing that more actively. I would have loved to have seen... And what does he get banned for life for? <laughs> yep, you guessed it, sexual harassment at one of those exact same conferences. I mean, who could have seen it coming? And then you get this lol suit by Dick Carrier against his former feminist uh, allies saying it's all liable and slander. And how much is he suing them for? Wait for it, wait for it. One million dollars. As the old joke goes, I'm suing you for a million dollars. Then the lawyer peeps up, but what about my fee? Ah, oh, sorry, one million and fifty thousand dollars. Actually, he's suing them for two million dollars, but nah, one million, two million, whatever. And yeah, the guy who piously lectured people about the immorality of atheists at conferences. The first thing I mean by plus is atheism plus basic moral values. Um, atheists should not be doing this. Uh, atheists should not be tolerating, it, tolerating this in our community. As a community, we should be speaking up against this and disapproving it. You know, the guy who, according to his own sworn affidavit, cheated on his wife multiple times at atheist conferences. Oh dear God, you have got to read some of his sworn testament. You know, like we were just having this casual conversation and suddenly Dick decides that what that conversation needs at that point was for the rest of the world to know that he had so much more sexual stamina since he had his vasectomy. Yeah, polite civilized conversation. Who wouldn't think of saying something like that? or propositioning somebody else's wife while their husband was passed out in the next room. More on why that's extra hilarious later. Yeah, that's the inspired leadership of Dick. Because, you know, the atheist community needs to grow. It needs his inspired advice to grow. Obviously, one of those big goals that's been talked about today already is to increase the number of atheists. Uh, hopefully, that means increasing the number of morally responsible atheists. I think that should be part of our goal as well. It needs Black Lives Matter and feminists and Mexican Americans. So these are the kinds of things we're talking about. We're going to be atheists plus we care about social justice. We're going to be atheists plus we support women's rights. We're going to be atheists plus we protest racism. Atheists plus we fight homophobia and transphobia. The sort of inclusivity that will make the next reason rally the biggest, the best, the most inclusive ever. This was clever. Dr. Dick Carrier PhD telling the American Atheist Convention how to grow in 2030. And many organizations have already been responsive to a lot of our ideas. And I have to say American Atheists is really on the forefront of being responsive to these ideas. And I'll give you some examples as we go along. Uh, but the other is broadening the appeal of atheist organizations and atheist events and so forth to women and minorities. And that's been improving lately. The, the chief way to do that, if not the only way it can be done, is to start giving them leadership roles, be responsive to their concerns, and treat them well when they show up. Say so. so this was a closed Q&A that was not open to people of color to actually address so one, I want to know why people of color were not given space and why this was. The point is to uplift and validate the perspective and to honor the black students, particularly the black students in Mizzou. I find it highly problematic that the point of this is to uplift your narrative as a white male entering a black space and then have... If you want more black atheists in your membership of your organization, 
then you have to show that you actually care about their concerns. Just know that all white people are f-ing devils. Yeah, that's don't take that all down. white cops are f-ing devils and white people. Reverse racism is not a thing. Uh, to give you an example of some concerns I've heard from black atheists is that black, local black atheist communities are very interested in their, their main issues that they're struggling with are not creationism in schools, they're more concerned with inner city poverty and prison reform. And of course, American atheists really get it. Now, uh, I mentioned the fact that we're, we're working on increasing the number of atheists. We saw a talk earlier showing that we're doing, looks like we're doing, American atheists especially doing a pretty good job at this. Uh, certainly it's significant, they're having an effect. And that was the American atheist who managed to run one of the biggest face plants ever, where they had the largest gathering of the non-religious in history and only managed to get a couple of thousand of people to turn up. The pot, and then in the chorus, you're going to feel where it comes in and join in or not. So should we show them how it goes? All right. Give that a try. All right, let's do it. One, two, three. Oh! Now everyone, join hands. Join hands, please. I'd like to lead you all in some swaying. Come on, pay attention. I said do it. Uh, I can't hear, but I'm going to trust you that you guys are going to come in <laughs> really, really loud when we, when we bring it in after the chorus. I am so proud to be a part of this movement when I see things like this happening. When I see people saying, you know what, we're gonna have a reason rally, there are going to be thousands, perhaps tens of thousands of atheists, of secularists, of non-believers, of all stripes. And then of course, we had this great contribution from Kelly Carlin, daughter of George Carlin, that made me question if I'd accidentally pushed the wrong button and had somehow ended up watching a video for preschoolers. With me, hands up, excellent, all right. I promise it's not hard at all. So first of all, I want all of you to stand up if you are able-bodied. Let's take a big, deep breath in and out. Let your lungs, the very lungs that take in oxygen. For this video, I wanted to focus on the positive, on some of the things in the atheist movement that I feel are really encouraging and really progressive and should give all of us who are part of the atheist community who are interested in atheist or secular activism, some hope and, and some real positive feelings for the future. I want you to look at these hands. Look down at these beautiful hands. I want you to look at these hands, look at them, and I want you to pretend that you are an alien or a visitor from another world and you have never seen a hand before in your life. We have all learned an important lesson today. I realize now that, dude, my hands are huge. What you hold and behold is a most unique object in the cosmos, a human hand of planet Earth. They can touch anything but themselves. Oh, wait. Imagine the journey of this hand in front of you, even, that at some point it had to learn to hold a spoon write its name, wipe a tear, give some pleasure. They call him fingers, but I never see him fing. Oh, there they go. There is nothing like this hand in the entire universe. Let me tell you something. People who said that the, the, th the Reason Rally was gonna fail because it, was, it had been taken over by SJWs. Um, this person, is alive on planet Earth at the very same time as you. There were people there who stood up for the importance and spoke out for the importance of standing up for trans people and gay people. Everybody cheered. There were even speakers who spoke out about the importance of working for fair and just and humane treatment for Muslims in America. And everybody cheered. Nobody booed. Nobody cried, SJW, regressive left. Everybody was on board with it. And if the people weren't on board with it, I guess they just kept their fucking mouth shut, which is just what they ought to do. Thank you. Thank you for taking these 10 minutes with me to be human beings. Thank you for acknowledging the moment of being alive. You are all beautiful human hearts and minds. 
and I love seeing the humanity in all of you. Thank you. And of course, Dick was absolutely adamant that when somebody else got accused of rape by a Tumblr post, you know, because Tumblr posts are always the most reliable form of rape accusation, it was his duty to plaster that shit everywhere. Because that's not slander and libel. That's, that's not trying to ruin someone's career or reputation. Now, bear in mind, that was before he was accused of sexual harassment. Nope, at that time, he had to lead the article with Michael Shermer, rape or just sleaze. Unless Box checked for other. And the article mentions rape almost 100 times. And he chastises Shermer for the horror of being unfaithful to his wife. Meanwhile, in Carrier's sworn deposition, affidavit further states in or around fall of 2013, I uh, confessed the affair to my wife, all from his blog, that he had a few brief affairs. And Dick chastises him for being forward to women. Meanwhile, in Carrier's sworn deposition, a polyamorous uh, love letter. God, you've got to feel the cringe in this. Okay, so this time I'm just saying fuck it and bearing my heart to you and being a little overly frank and forthcoming and just flat out hitting on you. You are unequivocally awesome and you know it, which is unequivocally sexy. Although I am a little sexually intimidated by you, which only makes me more nervous. I don't mean as a life partner. I think you have your hands full there anyway and my wife's rules on our open relationship. I'm not allowed to have any more of those right now. But as a sexual partner, even if just once, I admire you immensely. Your bravado, your power, your honesty, your intelligence, your character, your skill as a writer. And for me, admiring a woman is an enormous turn on. Competence is erotic. <laughs> And sharing sexual experiences with an incredible woman like you is so what I want out of life. Meanwhile, previously, Dick had chastised Germa for the horror of using rape juice, otherwise known as a social shrinking. Meanwhile, from Carrier's sworn deposition, affidavit states over the next couple of hours, the group talked over date rape juice, uh, <coughs> sorry, over drinks in Miss Schreidreck's kitchen. Affidavit states, I was drinking socially. All from another dramatic reading of one of Dick Carrier's blogs. I also like women who have or pursue a lot of partners, or who love to boast of their sexual exploits, especially over wine or whiskey or equivalent. And of course, when it was Michael Shermer, Dick Carrier was absolutely adamant that the worst thing that you could possibly do was hit on a woman when their husband was uh, in the next room. Meanwhile, from Dick's sworn deposition. Affidavit states, Phil Skeber became especially inebriated and passed out in the dining room. Affidavit further states, from time to time, his wife went into the dining room to check on her husband. Affidavit states, before concluding the discussion, I remarked that I found Miss Frank Skiba interesting and extended an open invitation to ask me out any time in the future, should her marital circumstances ever change. Things that do not make you Hitler, Stalin, a cultist, or a religionist. Uh, the obvious, you know, calling men who engage in overt sexual harassment douchebags and assholes. Not on that list. And merely lines later, affidavit states that at no time did I make physical contact with Mrs. Frank Skiba, nor cross any ordinary social boundaries. So obviously things like uh, propositioning someone's wife while her husband was passed out in the next room doesn't count as crossing any ordinary social boundaries for Dick Carrier. The main point here, as a community, as, as a representative, as someone who's representing the atheist community, as someone who's a member of the atheist community, don't let bad atheists represent you. Don't let them think they do by your silence, either. That's the kind of thing we want. We want more proactive uh, atheists representing and speaking out for their values and pointing out which atheists don't represent them. Carrier, maybe after his wife found out about his rampant, rampant cheating, settled for a... Uh, 
separation-y type stuff. And Richard Carrier, PhD, declared himself to be polyamorous. So Dick, after his 9,000 word article trying to smear somebody else as being a rapist based on Tumblr accusation type things, suddenly finds a conscience when he's the subject of the accusations. And these are in a much more diluted form because he's merely being accused of a sexual harassment. And of course, Dr. Dick Carrier decided to share with the world after they knew that he was polyamorous, he had to tell them that he was also a semen fetishist. I mean, Jesus, you couldn't make this stuff up. Another was sent to pornographic, dra pornographic drawings of her, uh, having been tied up and raped and jizzed on. Carrier also showed the great virtue that when someone asked him for a reference, someone who was no less than actually inviting him to the conference, eh, I'll just read it. Rick, hello, it's me, your arguably most favorite person in the Midwest region, Lauren. I have an odd request. I'm applying for grad school and think it would be both hilarious and so freaking awesome if you do me the honor of writing me a recommendation letter for it. I'm going to pursue a degree in nonprofit administration and kicking ass in case you were wondering. So what do you think? Can you? Will you? Please? I can offer you booze, drugs, sex. Surely there must be something I can do in exchange for your good word, sir. If not, I humbly offer my undying gratitude. Thank you for your time. I hope you're doing well and look forward to Skepticon 3. Lauren Lane, your number one super fan. And what was Dr. Dick Carrier's PhD's great response to this? Now I know what you're thinking. Dr. Dick Carrier's response to this is going to exude integrity and reasonableness. Oh, I was fuzzy on your last name because I'm getting senile. Lewis is Lane's hot sister, the one Superman secretly desires. Got it. P.S. As my reward, I expect you to dye your hair sexy black for me. I mean, for, for Skepticon. Oh, wait, is that... Sexual harassment? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sure I can come up with a legitimate reason for it. Just let me think on it for a whole weekend with a bottle of Glenny Vet. Yeah, there's nothing says professional conduct like a sworn affidavit, which you volunteered, where you admit that you were writing a reference for someone who you then went on to have sex with while being invited to a conference by that self-same person. But here's what I do know. Richard Carrier is one of the greatest minds in this movement. And you thought Gamergate smacked of incestuous corruption. And Carrier still wants one million dollars because of the uh, damage done to his reputation by being accused of sexual harassment. A claim that is made even more hilarious by virtue of the fact that Carrier claimed that his take-home pay was somewhere in the region of $14,000. So Carrier says about himself, I only take home about $15,000 a year. I could barely live on that with an extreme starving artist frugality. But I live with an awesome woman who earns considerably more than me, so I'm not living like a starving artist. I gladly operate as her domesticated manservant to earn my keep at home, in addition to my cash income paying our mortgage. And, of course, naturally, with such a great wife, you would expect that he treats her well. <laughs> nah, Dick Carrier was polyamorous. He just didn't bother to tell his wife about it. Yeah, Dick Carrier was polyamorous multiple times behind his wife's back, as he says in his own blog. <laughs> Damn straight social justice warriors, it's not cheating on your wife if you say you're polyamorous. And if she doesn't respect that, then she's a bigot. Now I wonder why he's divorced. So he basically wants 100 years salary in compensation because someone said that he sexually harassed someone. Yeah, because after all the dumb stuff that he's done, I'm sure this was the one that absolutely devastated his $15,000 per year earning potential. And I actually say this in all sincerity to Dr. Richard Carrier, PhD, whose avid readers span from Hong Kong to Poland, that he would actually be earning more money if he worked full-time as a burger flipper in McDonald's. And for the ultimate irony, 
I had long protested against this virtue signalling by having an insane hair trigger on sexual harassment policies. I mean, let me just let you know what Richard Currier thought about me for that. The article is entitled, Is Thunderfoot a Sociopath? With such great subtitles as Thunderfoot against having a moral conscience. Thunderfoot against privacy rights. Thunderfoot against women. Thunderfoot against being reasonable. Thunderfoot against women and empathy. I think I'm spotting the pattern here. Thunderfoot against critical thinking. Thunderfoot against minorities. And Thunderfoot against any kind of methodology, honesty or common sense whatsoever. The, the conclusions of which I'm going to read because they are just hilarious. Thunderfoot is effectively, and in some cases explicitly, arguing that atheists should be less compassionate, less caring of their fellow human beings, and especially less caring of their fellow atheists, their co-workers. He even singles out women and minorities as those who you should especially care nothing about. The perverse, sociopathic amorality of this man, and evidently his acolytes who upvote this amoral disrespect of others and their rights and concerns and happiness, is disturbing to me. And then, just to make it clear, he tells you what you should think as well. It should be disturbing to you. He rejects the very concept of a right to privacy. He even rejects our moral right to condemn and stop listening to harassing and abusive speech. And he even says we deserve it. At no point in his video does he show a single instance of actual human empathy for another human being. Instead, from beginning to end, all we get is a complete lack of compassion. Sorry, concern compassion or camaraderie with others, women and minority atheists especially. Now, compare his call for atheists to be less compassionate, less caring, less concerned, in fact wholly unconcerned for others, with my call for the reverse. Ask yourself, whose vision of the future of atheism do you want to realise? Those are the battle lines he has drawn. Scary, but true. <laughs> you decide, watch my video, compare it to his, and upvote the one you think is actually doing something good for the atheist movement. Meanwhile, Carrier, of course, was all for these draconian sexual harassment policies, which basically define sexual harassment as anything that a woman found thought felt was sexual harassment. So basically, Carrier has no defence at all here. The woman thought he was sexually harassing her, therefore he was. And of course, you know what really hurt Dick's fifis was when someone suggested that he might not be safe around young people at, say, a teenaged camp like Camp Quest. I mean, hell, after reading his sworn deposition, I wouldn't trust him alone with a vacuum cleaner. Oh, and just to fill you in on how completely incestuous this whole thing was, Richard Carrier was dating the married head of Camp Quest, who it turns out was married to the head of the Secular Student Alliance. And despite being married to each other, they insisted that there was no connection between Camp Quest and the Secular Student Alliance. And that's, of course, not counting the stuff on Carrier's own blog, where he recounts how he made women uncomfortable by caressing their hair and touching them, or asking, asking if he could make inappropriate comments about them, like they had sexy legs. And doing things like that will make your organization more attractive to atheist women and more responsive to their needs and concerns, and thus will attract more women. That's kind of the whole cycle. On honestly, having gone through all the affidavits, it looks like Carrier was just trying to have sex with almost anything that would stand still for long enough. I mean, damn, how many people openly put out on their own blog a call for ex-sex workers to have sex with him for free at conferences? I also like women who have or pursue a lot of partners, or who love to boast of their sexual exploits, especially over wine, or whiskey, or equivalent. 
I'm not going to get all butthurt or angsty over how high your number is. It very much has the opposite effect on me. Exhibit a lack of social awareness that would make the poop-flinging monkeys blush. And yet, this is exactly the guy who wants the no-douchebags policy at conferences. And after that, you pretend that you're not desperately trying to get laid. I'm also planning to have a hotel room, and am comfortable sharing it platonically. Certainly, I would enjoy sharing it non-platonically, but I don't expect it. I can't believe, even though I know, there are still guys who assume the other shit buys them sex. I like partners who are, or who have been, sex workers. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh, I think we've got full Macintosh. I mean, that's pathetic, even for a social justice warrior. Yeah, sure, Carrier, it was the uh, sexual harassment accusation that really finished you off there. Anyway, like I was saying, beyond the utterly cringe-worthy emails, like the one from Heine Dabahoy, Another great star of the atheist social justice warrior conference circuit who was given some $10,000 to write a book on Islam, which still hasn't been produced for years after the due date. And this is, of course, from Dick's uh, polyamorous love letter. You just radiate agency, and that's like a brilliant warm light you just want to embrace and experience passionately. I can go on admiring you from afar as a, as a writer, as an activist, a colleague, and a valuable asset to our movement. But it's my love you I can go on spending excellent time together with you as a friend when we happen to be around each other. I won't be badly dejected by a no, but if there's any chance you want me, I'm hoping to know. Hey, you. Sprite has something to tell you. Girls can smell your desperation. <laughs> and of course, she calls it immediately and blows him out the water. Hmm, how can I say this? You must have mistaken me for someone who is impressed by multiple accounts of multiple conquests and thinks a are you down to fuck email is a love letter. Is amusing. Confuses getting a hall pass after getting caught rampantly cheating for polyamory. Would you think that someone would hit on me out of pity and hasn't noticed the escalation of the way you've been acting and talking around me? I must have mistaken you for someone who would get the hint from me not acknowledging and or deflecting the aforementioned hints you've been conspicuously dropping. And after pages of exchanged emails, she actually just lays it down on the line. You've been heavily hinting at this for months now. If you want to feel awful, feel awful for the months of me wanting to tell you no, but not being asked in a direct enough way for me to just say no and get it over with. It gives me no pleasure to reject anyone for any reason. I have no desire to make anyone feel awful. So it's clear from this thing that was submitted as a sworn affidavit by Dickie that Dickie has been doing this stuff for months. Don't wonder how they do that. They just do. A simple look's enough to see that you're totally desperate. Now, for Carrier, for those who have forgotten with the self-proclaimed intellectual artillery of Atheism Plus and stood up in front of the American Atheist Convention in 2013 and spelled out why he thought it was so important for Atheism Plus to exist. Atheism plus feminism, plus Black Lives Matter, plus acknowledging all genders. Again, Atheism Plus is a thing. Uh, we got to... Get that cross. Uh, this movement was for promoting moral values more in the atheist movement and the discussion of societal, pro societal problems among atheists more than we already do, uh, and for making the atheist community more welcoming of and responsive to women and minorities. Which, of course, by the time you've put all this effort into the minorities, was basically going to be atheism plus white guilt. Uh, without enough time to actually do any of the atheism or skepticism type stuff. Yeah, Atheism Plus was basically a load of white people having a competition to see who could immolate themselves the most about how evil it was to be a white and a male, and worst of all, 
straight. My favorite conferences I've been to have had speakers talk about all kinds of different things. We had one speaker at one conference talk about the neurophysiology of transgenderism and homosexuality, about making the atheist community better informed. And this is the sort of thing you can have someone come up here and give you a Feminism 101 seminar, for example. And, of course, women aren't the only neglected group. Uh, how are you serving the disabled, the blind, the deaf? Uh, but also, what do Hispanic or black or Filipino atheists want to discuss with the wider atheist community? What issues might they want to get the atheist community to help them with? Uh, and I have to tell you, when I saw the lineup, uh, the speaker's lineup for the American Atheist Convention this year, I was amazed. The most diverse speaking lineup that I've seen uh, in, in, in any conference. Uh, having black, several black groups represented, several Hispanic groups represented, lots of women speakers, that's amazing. And I, I want to see that continue. I want to see that become like the norm at conferences everywhere. So I think atheist organizations should take note of this, uh, and many already have. I think American Atheists already gets it. This will grow your membership and financial support. Amazing, isn't it? If you hijack a skeptical movement and redefine its priorities as white guilt minus skepticism, yeah, kind of kill the movement. I mean, who could have seen that coming? But just ignoring his uh, wizard advice to leadership, you know, because just look at all the blacks, Hispanics, and Filipinos, and of course, the vast number of women in the uh, largest gathering of the non-religious in history. Yeah, that was inspired advice to leadership there, dick. But coming back, this is what amuses me on so many levels about this. It's just the sheer level of comical incompetence. I mean, really, if you read out any love letters, they're gonna sound kinda goofy, let alone where people are basically begging others for sex out of the blue in a polyamorous love letter. But it takes a special brand of moron to actually sue someone and then actually make those emails public and get this to stop your name being a laughing stock. Sure, it was more or less an open secret that there was a hell of a lot of illicit liaison type things at such meetings. But let's be real, every movement has its groupies. But whatever, it was what it was. Was it perfect? Hell no, but it was a downside better than what we have after the feminists insisted on this micro-policing of flirting activities. Damn straight, there ain't no harm in consenting adults doing what they do. And sure, Dick Carrier here was a little more horndoggish than most, but honestly, beyond the guy trying to get laid <laughs> almost everywhere, but whatever, the bottom line was he was more of an annoyance than a harasser by most non-feminist standards. Shit, if you were to mark every guy who'd been blown out of the water for hitting on a woman as being a harasser, there wouldn't be a man on earth who wasn't one. But then again, God did Dick get what he deserved. I mean, the guy who led the charge about how conferences should micro-police people's flirting activities to the point where this would be sexual assault. And yet, it does say touching, not groping. He touched someone's arm. Therefore, sexual assault. Bravo, dick. The guy who is perfectly happy to joyously ride the character assassination rumor train without a conscience. Until, of course, he found himself tied to its tracks. Yeah, God, he got what he deserved. And now he's banned from life from all future conferences of Skepticon by his former feminist allies. I mean, really, who would touch the guy now? And this is from his claim. The defendant intended to inflict a vicious, deliberate and calculated attack on Dr. Carrier's character, reputation and professional standing and to turn the academic and skeptical communities against Dr. Carrier and to cause them to have contempt, scorn, disgust, hatred for him and to hold him in the lowest possible regard. Dude, you had no reputation or professional standing before this. You already had published how you cheated on your wife multiple times, in some cases with a girl 16 years younger than you, who we now find was no less than the conference organiser, who we now know you were writing a favourable reference for in exchange for certain uh, favours. You led the charge for Atheism Plus. You know, the one that drove the atheist movement into a ditch. 
Remember, you boldly claimed to be their intellectual artillery. The intellectual artillery for Atheism Plus. Now, Atheism Plus is already a thing. Um, it, uh, Atheism Plus, as I just described it, everything I've just told you, is and was and has been already a growing and active movement within New Atheism overall. Only to come to this a year or so later. Are you active on the athe uh, Atheism Plus forum? I'm not. No, I. In fact, I. I have. I have no account there, and have never posted there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. I think we've gone full McIntyre. <laughs> well, you were quite happy to represent this. As no, free thought blogs wasn't sinking at all. Nah, it must just be the Thunderfoot sucks at science. Or oh, be he's a liar. Nah, he's probably just a liar. Nice one there, Dick. Classy stuff. And now, according to your very submitted defamation case, I pull in about 15 times as much traffic as the entire blogging network. You know, that blogging network, the one that vowed to make me a pariah such that I would never again be dealt with by the secular community. And your website pulls in about one-tenth of the traffic of Freethought blogs. Yeah, Carrie, I'm sure it was this sexual harassment accusation that completely ruined your uh, $15,000 a year earning potential. But anyway, thank you for one of the greatest lols fests ever since you decided to submit this as actual sworn testimony. Carrier, it's called karma. And it's only a dick if you are one.